What is up everybody? Welcome back to Mount Mograph and Summit 45, the snappy line logo that we're going to go ahead and build in Adobe After Effects. So basically this effect is a very modern, fresh look to creating like a logo build, um, an animation, a uh, picture, anything you want really. It's a pretty easy effect and I'm going to show you a really quick and fun workflow to just get this rocking away and uh, yeah, get your project done because that's the best part. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into Adobe After Effects and get this sweet uh, snappy logo effect built. Uh, so I'm going to use Creative Cloud um, After Effects. This probably work with pretty much anything so let's go and create a new composition I got lucky and got this really fancy purple so let's start by just creating a text reference uh, layer so for me I'm gonna go ahead and just type sweet and uh, I got a nice uh, neon green color as well so I'm gonna center this up in my composition and just scale it up to a size that looks nice and modern and fresh and then we're gonna go ahead and just lock this layer just like that so we can't click it can't mess around with it and now we can do the best part of this video so uh, what we're gonna do is basically draw a path um, for each of these letters and the path is going to be trimmed so we get that animation that looks like these lines draw these letters so that's why it's important to have a reference of what word you want to use which would make some sense so um, personally, I like having these lines all come off from different sides of the screen because it adds a nice kind of dimension to your animation. So I recommend doing that as well. So for this S, I'm just going to start with this line up here and kind of draw into the S and just use my Bezier handles to kind of kind of get this to work. Um, and uh, yeah, so just kind of shape it however you want. It doesn't really have to be perfect because it's hopefully going to move um, very quick so the user won't really notice it. And I like to add a little extra line um, kind of coming off of each of these shapes. Uh, and that'll just give you a nice little added motion. So it looks like it comes in and builds something and it goes out and has extra room. You don't want to cramp the style. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and draw this other side of the S. Um, you're going to just stylize uh, these shapes uh, based off what you want your text to look like. So uh, for me, I'm going to kind of just keep a nice open look to this uh, typography. So, whoa, I'm just doing a hor horrible job with the pen tool here. Um, it's like I'm a newbie. Uh, yeah, so just draw along here. I'm going to keep nice open ends for the most part, I think. Um, you know, you can have some fun with it, stylize it however you want. You really don't even have to follow the typography at all. Um, but basically just kind of trace along here and add a little extra motion coming out of it that could look cool and if you need to you can go and just fix your letters no problem at all mine looks a little janky uh, but it should be just okay so anyway let's go ahead and just draw this uh, W now we got that all built up two lines to create an S that's not bad and as you can see this is gonna be our path of motion and it should look really cool when we're all done so let me go ahead and just draw the W from maybe up here would be cool so I'll just draw it in here and just uh, trace along really wherever you want on here. It doesn't even have to be perfect. And uh, yeah, just kind of do your thing and have fun with it. So I like this uh, W. I got that extra motion at that side over here. And now I'm going to probably need another layer to, just to fill in the rest of this. So I'll start it over here, kind of draw along the top, draw into this W. And you once again don't really have to cut out the whole letter because we're going to animate it so it, it makes the letter. And like the, the viewer would definitely understand what letter it's supposed to be. So you want to get the gist of the letter, but you don't have to go nuts and trace every single line, which is great because no one likes to do that. So I like how that is looking. I got this nice path of motion um, and it looks like I want to balance it out because it's all coming from this top left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and for this E, I'm going to come in from the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of pop up over here and pop out there and I'm going to call that line good and uh, maybe draw a bigger line um, that's going to trace a whole bunch of the E. So I'll do this and uh, pretty much get all of it except for like that top bit. And then um, I'll draw one more line um, this E is going to be very complex, I guess. Um, and by complex, I mean not really complex. Um, and it's a little janky in here, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect for this example. And I'm really not spending too much time on it, as you can see. Uh, you can definitely spend way more time on this, really getting it perfect if you'd like. But, you know, for this video, I don't think anyone wants to see me play around with uh, vertex points um, all day long, because I could totally do that if you want. So anyway, uh, now that I got this nice balance, um, as you can see of everything coming in, I think the 
it needs to balance out more up over here. So just with that in mind, all I have to do is just draw from up here uh, down into my E and uh, trace along just a little bit. That should be cool. Not going to worry about it. And then uh, maybe another path of motion just over here and probably trace a little bit more of this E uh, just to really get that uh, typography in there. And then maybe one more line just across the top because I forgot to trace it. So it's pretty easy. This effect works well for if you don't really know what you're trying to design. And then obviously we now have a line from pretty much every side except over here. So I think it would make some sense to just come on in uh, nice and normal just like this for the T and maybe go nuts with it. Um, so that looks cool. And then now that I have all that, it seems to not be balanced over here. So I'm just going to draw uh, one more line coming off the side, just like this onto my T. Whoa, that was a bad line. Um, I guess I'll actually just do it like this. So it doesn't ever have to even uh, fill the whole space. Um, you know, you can kind of end it wherever you want. Just this is a good way to look at it and be like, is this balanced? And to me, this looks like it has some good motion and it looks pretty balanced. So with that in mind and that all set up, let's go ahead and just select all our layers. And we're going to go ahead and in our top um, little search bar here, let's type cap. And this is going to pop up the selection, um, whatever word we type in, if you know what you're looking for, it's just going to pop up that selected property. So for me, I'm looking at this and I don't want this butt cap. I want this uh, nice uh, round color or round color. I don't know why I said that. Um, this nice round end. So I'm just going to change all of these to round cap. Unfortunately, you have to select each one individually, um, but this way it's really quick and you don't actually have to go into each layer. Um, and that's why you should use the search bar every once in a while. Um, this is pretty much the only time I've found it useful. Um, when you have a layer that like a lot of layers, you just need to change the same thing to. Um, it's nice to just kind of pull that variable and just jump on in there and change it just like that. So looks like I missed this one and missed this one. And, uh, yeah, so it looks like I got all of them and this is just going to make it a little bit smoother. You know, um, as you're looking at this now, all the, these ends have a nice rounded edge. It doesn't look so sharp um, and that should be a lot better for us. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these layers and just hit the shy guy and shy them. So I can just focus on this layer right now because that's all I need to do. You know, this is pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and hold command, click this arrow and just go and add the trim effect or the trim paths effect right here. So I'm going to do that and toggle that down and uh, set a keyframe for my start and end and then I'm just gonna go back up and press U and uh, we're gonna go in here and uh, just animate backwards so now that I have my end keyframe set I'm just gonna go back in time just like that super easy and uh, let's just go ahead and turn our end down so as you can see we get this nice trace of the line and uh, I'm gonna turn this all the way down to zero and so it's gonna draw on and that looks all cool um, but it doesn't look great you know like I think we could still do better so I'm gonna go and uh, right about here I'm gonna start uh, this this start um, keyframe that made no sense um, I'm gonna start animating this uh, start keyframe as well so it actually looks like it's a, it's a line you know it's not like a, a weird continuation so I might actually have to you know draw this up a little bit you got to find that right balance of what you're trying to do and for me this doesn't make sense right now so I might actually delete that one and just see what I'm going for um, so I like how this all draws on uh, that looks cool to me um, and pretty much at that point though, you know, um, I don't want it to be all the way drawn on. So at, for the end right here, I might actually turn my start down. So you kind of just get some of the letter. You don't get all of it. And I'm going to turn this right about there. And then at the beginning, I suppose I will crank this back to zero. So uh, if that made any sense, I explained that horribly. But now you got this draw on and it ends. And uh, there we go. That looks cool. So now basically I want to keep this motion going. So once this line draws on, uh, we're going to want to go really far in advance and just slowly uh, get rid of this. So we're going to turn both these numbers up to 100 and that will effectively uh, get rid of our animation. So now when I play this line, uh, we're going to have it draw in and it's going to keep sliding, but maybe a little bit slower. And then uh, slowly it's going to uh, bring its way out of our view. So uh, we're going to go ahead and tweak this a little bit more, but let's select all our layers, easy ease them by pressing F9 on your keyboard and just go into your graph editor 
and just go ahead and turn your speed and influence up just a little bit. Um, you can go kind of random on this. Looks like I am going kind of random. And this will just make our motion a little bit better because that's what we need. So uh, now with that, um, when I play this, we're going to have a nice little snap in. And wow, it draws on so great. And then it slowly uh, fades off. And that looks pretty cool. So one of the nice things about this trim effect is I can just go ahead and uh, find it. Um, and press J on my keyboard to go back in time to the first keyframe, select all my keyframes, do command C on my keyboard, unshy my other layers, and uh, now what I can do is just paste this uh, layer onto all my other layers. So this is the thing I was talking about, about a quick workflow, um, and then we can just go ahead and tweak that middle animation uh, to get a nice look. So pretty much, um, you know, I can hide this sweet layer and uh, we're going to go ahead and watch as all of our lines draw on just like that. Boom. How awesome does that look with no time? And then it's going to slide out, which looks pretty cool as well. So as you can see, this looks pretty cool for no time at all. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to tweak this a little bit to really get that look together. So for this first S, I'm going to go ahead and make my sweet uh, word visible again. I'm just going to go ahead and tweak these settings. Um, this one actually looks good just so I get enough of that middle letter, you know, like you're going to change your start and your end. So you get a really nice, uh, tight look to your animation. So I'll just press U on each of the keyframes um, and just go layer by layer and uh, just, just get this lined up a little bit better. You know, that middle keyframe um, is the one that's important. So as long as you get those lines basically where you want them, um, it's going to be a good look. So it looks like I'm on the W here and I'm just going to go and make sure I'm covering all the parts of the letter I need. Um, you know, you don't want to go off too much because that's going to be our end point of the animation. So I'll select layer four here and do the same thing. You know, you want to you want to show the viewer some kind of cool movement, but you don't need to go crazy and have all these extra lines because that looks like crap um, or it looks bad. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep changing these middle keyframes here until I really get a good shape to the letters and uh, just move on to the next layer. It's really easy. Um, and that's why I like pasting keyframes like this because, you know, you save time. And if you save time, you save money. Um, I sound like some kind of banking commercial. And I do not own a bank, although one day maybe I will. Probably not. This is just, this was the dumbest commentary ever. And you see what happens when I'm talking and I have no idea what to fill the time with is I say dumb things and get lots of dislikes on videos, I'm sure. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and keep tweaking this stuff uh, real easy. I probably should have chose a shorter word, um, but then you can kind of see, I guess you can kind of see the logic behind um, animating and filling space so you don't get more boring, boring movement. And that is the key to being a motion graphic artist um, is just making sure you're filling space and filling time uh, like with bad commentary, um, which is what I am just horrible at. So anyway, just keep going through these layers and uh, yeah, just tweak, tweak those layers until you have something that seems to form these letters um, and give a really nice look to everything. And now I can go ahead and hide my sweet layer and you can totally make out what this word is supposed to be. Um, obviously spend some more time on it if you would like. And then we're going to have to make sure that when we go to our uh, last keyframes here and select all these layers that our layers are actually out. So um, I'm going to have to turn this one all the way down to zero. Just scroll through here. That one's to zero. We're in good shape. Everything is out. And now when I play this animation, um, if I don't have caps lock on, uh, we're going to get a nice little draw in. You totally see what the, the word is supposed to be. The motion continues and it is out and it looks totally cool. Uh, so now let me grab these layers here and just go back to my first keyframes and uh, just make sure everything is at zero. You know, um, so I'm going to scroll through here and see if I have any culprits. It looks like on this first layer uh, that is set to 14, which is no good. Um, scroll through the rest of these. Um, you just got to be careful. You know, you don't want to have anything stupid happening. So it looks like I got an 8% here. That's going to go down to zero. Um, and it looks like I took care of all the starts. I'm going to go ahead to the beginning and make sure I don't have any extra letters. Uh, this looks pretty cool. Draws on, snaps, and draws out just like that. That looks cool. 
Um, what I might do is just uh, kind of change the timing a little bit, press your tilde key to pop into this full graph view, and uh, maybe snap this a little bit closer so it's only a two seconds out, and maybe move both of these uh, just a little bit. And you could totally stagger these um, keyframes. I kind of like the look of everything coming in together. Um, that looks nice, and wow, that is like a piece of artwork right there, some mountains. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, just minimize this and check out our animation. Boom, uh, looks so good. Uh, sweet, and that looks great. So one thing I'm gonna wanna do probably is uh, press T for your opacity, and just as these layers are coming in, you know, it's kind of abrupt, so we're just gonna smooth this out by uh, going forward a little bit in time, setting your opacity to 100, going back in time and turning it down to zero, so it's nice and smooth move in and we'll do the same as it's coming out so right about there uh, set your opacity maybe slide this back a little bit and uh, turn it down to zero just so you know once again it's nice and smooth because that is what animation is all about press f9 uh, to make our uh, keyframes easy ease and uh, whoa what's going on here uh, press U so I can hide all my layers and then let's just check out our animation it is sweet um, and this is looking pretty dang good so we can go ahead and select all our layers here and turn on motion blur um, if we want and then actually just pre comp these uh, shift command C if I can uh, press the right commands which I seemingly cannot uh, just do that we're gonna call this white lines and then Cool, we got our white lines. Uh, we can go ahead and do our classic Mount MoGraph trick where you just do Command D to duplicate the layer and go grab a fill effect and drop this onto your duplicated layer and just make it some other exciting color um, that just looks horrible and uh, then just drop it behind the other layer and stagger the top layer and in no time at all you have a much more complex animation um, where you have staggered colors so if you go ahead and preview this effect um, with the motion blur it might go a little bit slower um, but once again that is a way to kind of sneak the viewer to show um, sneak the viewer that doesn't make sense it makes uh, the viewer kind of think everything smoother than it is especially in this case um, but as you can see um, you know I have some janky corners there they're right angles when they should be circles but we did this really quick I'm not sure how long this video has been it's 17 minutes for a cool effect I hope you guys like it um, and I hope you found it sweet so anyway this was Matt from Mount MoGraph I'm gonna try to keep Keep the cool contact can, uh, content coming. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel or like this video. Leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. And you guys rock. Peace out and get your learn on.